Aortic stenosis is a condition of one of the heart valves. It is the result of calcification of what are normally thin, pliable leaflets which open and close to let blood flow through to the body from the big chamber in the heart called the left ventricle. Over the course of time, thickening and calcification of this heart valve leads to stiffening, and this stiffening prevents blood from flowing through the valve. This is called aortic stenosis or aortic valve stenosis. Once aortic valve stenosis becomes severe, it is a danger to life. If you have severe aortic stenosis and you have started to develop symptoms with this, the risk for you is a 50-50 chance that you will not be alive in the next two years. So it's really important to pick this disease up and treat it very effectively. The sorts of symptoms that patients will suffer with aortic stenosis are things like shortness of breath, tiredness, dizziness, palpitations, or even chest pain, just like the sort of pain that people get that they call angina. These are very serious symptoms and you must go and see your doctor if you develop them so that he can have a listen to your chest. This is the simplest way to pick up aortic valve stenosis. Aortic stenosis can progress very rapidly, unlike some of the other heart valve conditions that we diagnose. This is one of those conditions that once it's picked up needs to be followed very, very carefully. A patient can go from moderate aortic stenosis, which is an aortic stenosis that is not currently critical and may create no symptoms, to severe aortic stenosis in a very short period of time, perhaps within six months to a year. So once we know that you have aortic valve stenosis, you should have regular follow-up with an examination by an expert cardiologist and also an echocardiogram. An echocardiogram is a special scan, very painless. It's like the jelly scan that we do for pregnant ladies, but instead of looking for a baby, we're looking at the heart on the chest. And this will give us some very accurate numbers about the severity of the aortic stenosis, how well your heart is able to cope with the aortic stenosis, and also in those borderline cases where severe aortic stenosis has not quite occurred, indications that actually surgery is still indicated. The simplest way to diagnose aortic stenosis is with the use of a stethoscope, a simple device that doctors put on your chest to have a listen to your heart. And aortic stenosis creates a certain type of murmur or sound that we can pick up very simply. If you develop symptoms that might be due to aortic stenosis, shortness of breath, dizziness, palpitations, funny heartbeats, or you collapse or get chest pain, you must go and see your doctor and he can listen to your heart and if you have aortic valve stenosis, he will be able to hear it. The first thing that he will then want to do is perform an electrocardiogram or an ECG, little squiggly lines that tell us about how your heart is contracting and also to perform an echocardiogram, like a pregnant lady scan of the heart, which will allow us to look very specifically at the heart valve and also to look at the heart itself in general and to look at how severe, if you have aortic stenosis, your aortic stenosis is. This is important because if you have symptoms and severe aortic stenosis, you need surgery relatively quickly. The surgery will make you feel better, but more important than that, will make you live longer. There are many options for the treatment of severe aortic stenosis and the good news is that they are all very safe and extremely effective. The gold standard treatment for aortic valve stenosis is surgery. Traditionally, the surgery is performed through the breastbone. You are put on a machine called a heart-lung machine and the heart is stopped. The tube within which the aortic valve sits called the aorta is opened and the calcified diseased aortic valve is removed. Any fragments of calcium are very carefully removed at the same time for obvious reasons. We can then put into the space where we've removed your old aortic valve whatever valve is required. So we can use mechanical valves, carbon valves, tissue valves, and the broad distinction between these valves is simple. The tissue valves do not need lifelong blood thinners, but the carbon and the mechanical valves do need lifelong blood thinners. Now, over the last 18 years, we have been performing the same operation, instead of through the breastbone, through a small cut, either through a small breastbone cut or between the ribs on the right-hand side. The operation that we perform between the ribs on the right-hand side has certain really attractive features. It's not just about the fact that it's a smaller cut. It's just that we don't 
break any bone. And this means that the wound will heal or the incision will heal in seven or eight days instead of 12 weeks for the breastbone cut. And there are other advantages to the keyhole uh, procedure. Less infection, less bleeding, less pain, and much quicker recovery back to the normal things that you would like to do. If you like to play golf, for example, you're not going to be playing golf for 12 weeks after the breastbone cut. Whereas after the small cut between the ribs, a lot of our patients are back on the golf course within a couple of weeks. Whatever it is that you like to do in your life, keyhole heart surgery, if you're suitable for it, and if it's performed by experienced teams, will get you back to normal life sooner. Now, there is another treatment for aortic stenosis. It's called TAVI, T-A-V-I or transcatheter aortic valve implantation. Now this is a treatment where we can actually deal with the aortic stenosis by putting a valve in through a wire in the groin. There's no surgery, there's no heart lung machine, and sometimes you don't even need a deep anesthetic. Now the advantage of this is it's a very useful treatment for those patients who are currently perhaps too unwell for traditional heart surgery. So if you're a little bit older, perhaps over the age of 80, and you have other conditions like your kidneys aren't working properly or your lungs don't work properly, it may be that your surgeon decides that you're not fit enough for heart surgery. Well, we can still find a way to treat you effectively with TAVI. TAVI is not useful for everybody because it does have its drawbacks. There is a higher risk, for example, of needing a pacemaker under the skin to regulate the heartbeat. There is a higher risk of leaks around the edges of the valve. There's a higher re risk that you get recurrence of symptoms. And in certain groups of patients who are suitable for traditional heart surgery, either by the breastbone or through the keyhole incision, we see after about a year onwards, a life enhancing benefit with surgery as opposed to TAVI. So this is very important and the correct treatment for you can be elucidated by what we call a heart team. Experts in the treatment of aortic valve stenosis by both TAVI, keyhole heart surgery and traditional breastbone surgery. The main message here is that once we diagnose aortic valve stenosis and you need treatment, treatments are effective and they're very safe. They'll make you feel better and they'll make you live much longer. Unfortunately, aortic valve stenosis cannot really be treated with medications. Sure, your doctor may start you on medicines once they make the diagnosis that you have aortic stenosis, but these are just temporizing maneuvers to keep you well enough until you reach definitive treatment. Definitive treatment can only really be something that's going to reopen the valve, either by getting rid of the calcified valve to allow blood through that area and around the body, or by putting something inside your diseased valve to open that space up. So traditional surgery, either performed through the breastbone or by keyhole, is a method where we remove the valve in its entirety and put a new one in. Very effective, gold standard treatment. TAVI is a treatment where, in patients who are not suitable for surgery, we can put a valve inside and open it up to force your disease valve out of the way in order to then allow the new TAVI valve, the one placed through the groin, to take over the function of your disease valve. So medicine, temporizing maneuver for aortic valve stenosis, but ultimately we need to correct the hemodynamic problem that the valve creates, either with surgery or the insertion of a valve over a wire through the groin. Many patients come to see me in clinic with a diagnosis that's been made by their doctors called moderate aortic valve stenosis. What does that mean? Well, all that means is that on the echocardiogram or other measures that the doctor has used, your valve is opening sufficiently to allow blood through, but it is nevertheless calcified and not opening properly. If you don't have symptoms, shortness of breath, palpitations, chest pain or dizziness, then if you genuinely only have moderate aortic stenosis, we don't need to operate or correct that problem. But what we do need to do is keep a very careful eye on this. Moderate aortic stenosis will almost always progress to severe aortic stenosis. And therefore, regular echocardiograms, and depending upon the nature of the moderate disease in the valve, we may re-echo a patient at three months or six monthly to keep a very close eye to ensure 
how rapidly that valve is progressing because no one really knows when it's going to become severe. If a patient's asymptomatic with moderate aortic stenosis but becomes symptomatic, then it's very important that we repeat the echocardiogram sooner rather than later to ensure that the severity of the stenosis has not progressed. Now what is clear is that if you have moderate aortic stenosis genuinely on echo and also you don't have symptoms, there is no indication for surgery. It's not like changing a tire on your car just because three months from now it'll be worn out. We want to wait till the indication for surgery is reached. Once it is reached, however, surgery is indicated.